So good afternoon. Uh, I'm standing between lunch and uh, uh, I, just, I was just collecting from uh, information from Rao, actually, regarding the audience. I think uh, it's predominantly from the students uh, from aerospace and mechanical. And how many are from computer science? Oh, oh. huge number. I'm surprised, actually. Oh, very nice. So that's good. Uh, I think now you were uh, bombarded uh, from that college about the frontiers of uh, technology in the advanced energy materials. Energy materials are plenty. You have got fossil fuels and all those things which are old. So this, whatever he talked about is the advanced energy materials. And uh, Professor Vijay Kumar, I think, uh, though he's a physicist, I think he has been generous enough to add devices also into that. Team of the country. So you have got devices also. So probably you had a huge exposure to several devices which were uh, designed by Cement. Of course, it's all together with uh, so many other organizations. I mean, uh, DST, DRO, Park, all the people are, they are working together. <coughs> so I come from DRO. Uh, we have got several laboratories uh, which are working in materials, energy materials, especially. We have got HEMR, High Energy Materials Research Laboratory in Pune. So they are working on a different class of materials. Basically, that energy is used for destructive purposes. So uh, it's used for you know, <laughs> <laughs> ammunition. Sorry. They contain much more energy than a very peaceful energy. <laughs> about. And of course, we also make some sort of a peaceful uh, you know, material which, which gets added to the rear end of the rocket. So, <laughs> just propellant. So it takes the rockets up, and if it's a missile, obviously it's against the still a destructive force. So therefore, that's one class of material. And uh, most of the uh, the technologies, whatever the Kali talked about, I think uh, they are all uh, the same, it's more or less the same. Whenever we are using even the uh, energy material research. So uh, one thing, uh, I mean, several things were assumed as prerequisite. So I just want to list all of them such that probably you can go back and Google them and then probably update them. So Professor Kale assumed that uh, everybody knows about the material dropping, material structures, the crystalline structures about the materials, and he also assumed the atomic structure and good amount, good amount of chemistry. So I think you know, if you remember the periodic table, most of you should remember. There were several elements, one strip of elements called the actinides and lampoids, which are levels. So when you study those, Whenever you studied in the previous in the previous state, you thought, why this? <laughs> Unfortunately, all of them are put in your CM. You name the materials, selenium, cadmium, or sorry, opium, name them, they are there. So, to that, they wanted to mentally, you uh, probably didn't have this also, you wanted to fill our table and six. So, people went on inventing those materials and come to them. No, it's not the case. So, <laughs> It's, it's real hard work to get each one of those elements and put it into that table. So people have got Nobel Prizes and whatnot, all the awards, accolades, and then it's all there. Now you have got the whole periodic table, and you know um, continuous sustained research which has happened in the field of chemistry has told us what element has got what capability, what capability. Now, uh, like uh, I think uh, Vice Chancellor said, uh, so it's multidisciplinary work. So uh, we are having a problem in the sense that most of us want to do some research. Sometimes it does. If somebody wants to join a software company and take money and enjoy, I don't think they will waste their time in attending seminars. They would rather do something. So very fact that you have come to a conference, probably you are having some orientation, some remote orientation towards research. So therefore, uh, if you want to do research, so you want to get enabled. So Research has come a long way. So scientific research was has come several paradigms. So currently, this is the fourth paradigm of research which is going on. Earlier, I think, uh, like Archimedes, uh, when he got into the you know bottle, so he found out that the simple uh, principle that the relation between the density and the volume. So, but uh, that was the basic phenomenological research which was the first, first paradigm. So earlier, very old, right from 1000 years to till about 100 years back, I think most of the research were, was, uh, was carried on at the phenomenological. So you observe something and then 
you document and they say this is the observation. So next came the next series of revolution. I mean, next uh, sort of uh, research came when all these Newtons and uh, other Eilers and other people started. So they wanted to have a mathematical relation uh, between the phenomena. So they made mathematical modeling. So generated mathematical modeling for each and everything. And then that was the research. So any research, any PhD should have invented, written some new equations or added some constant to the equation and then generated. The third uh, class of research came when um, the computers came into existence. That's about 15, 10, 20, 30 years back. So computational uh, analysis, because the equations, I think people got saturated. Most of the things had some equations and therefore the close form solution became, I think, uh, a tougher challenge to add on even the constants into them. So therefore the computational work started and then you could get huge things modeled in computers. So they could do the analysis and then come up with some more solution to the most of the problems. So now that also is over. Now any problem, you just, probably there are some bots you can tell the problem and then it will model and give the result. So that's the sort of advancement has happened thanks to the computational research. Now that also is done. So what is the fourth paradigm? Currently, big data. So the big data and probably the AI and ML, they are the ones which are going to do research in any field, including metrics. So now we'll come back to the metrics. So, pardon? No, sorry. So, <laughs> so material research and without AI and ML is almost difficult. So this is the new, the fourth paradigm, I think, of the computational uh, <coughs> experts and probably would be experts, will be delighted, should be delighted, but each and every, whether it is uh, gene sequencing to uh, the new invention of new materials, for any of these applications, you need computational uh, capabilities, both the artificial intelligence and, because the parameters which were used to be half a dozen, less than half a dozen with which you could model a system and then analyze and understand is no longer exist. Hundreds and thousands of parameters simultaneously interact with each other and quite a few of them are contradictory. You need to strike a balance and ultimately deliver a material which will serve the purpose for which you are looking for. So that's the thing. So <coughs> now what are the prerequisites for listening to uh, Professor Kale's lecture was I was just talking about it, atomic structure, we were talking about chemistry and about uh, nanomaterials. So nanomaterials, I think all the materials when they go to the nano size, you know, they behave in a different manner. The quantum dot, whatever he talked about, it's basically because the material was crushed down to very nano level, nano particle level. So the same material, the cadmium, selenium, whatever combination behaves in a totally different manner and starts giving, generating those fantastic uh, colors. Of course, he is using, using it for generation of energy, but elsewhere, you see in the big, beautiful TVs with millions of colors, so it's all based on those technologies. So nevertheless, here, coming back to the energy, so again, he talked, he showed hundreds and hundreds, uh, dozens of microstructures. So, so it is assumed that uh, the audience is aware of scan electron microscope, FESAM, atomic force microscope, XRD, transmission electron microscope. All the data, whatever you presented, it needs that sort of trained brains to understand the structure of the materials, such that this structure of the materials can be engineered for the specific purpose. So you have got an objective that this material should have given me this property, you need to clean those materials. You have to add the materials, you have to process the materials, and probably control the material properties. So this is all basic requirements which is assumed, which is common for all the things. So now coming back to the various um, energy, um, um, I think energy materials and energy devices. So let's go back from uh, devices. Ultimately, uh, I'm applied physics, sir. So not pure physics, sir. You are engineering physics. So therefore, ultimately, you need to look at devices, batteries, and hydrogen uh, generated engines, uh, hydrogen engines, mm. solar electric systems, wind electric mm. systems, and low carbon footprint systems etc. All these things, you know, uh, they all need uh, materials uh, to be engineered as per our requirement. How do we go about? You saw the battery technology. It's one of the most exhaustive uh, lecture you can get exposed to. I don't know whether you can get a hand on the, all those uh, PPTs. You need to Google each and every one of them because each of those technology, it has been done here in India. 
but the, the frontiers of those technologies elsewhere in the globe is so far reaching, but you can, it's so difficult to get one problem out of that and then start something. So it is so complex and so complicated, and the tools and the technology that is needed are also very, very difficult to get and very costly. Not all will be able to access that thing, but there are such laboratories, such facilities, you should be able to do that. So that's it. So that's coming to these technologies. So I'd like to just briefly go about what is the sort of uh, technologies that are there from the outset, which you can take on and probably do some amount of contribution in research. So as you saw, most of the things, whether it can be a, a solar panel, these days solar panel comes with wafer technologies, silicon wafer above and below, it's converted to pre-time and enter based on the doping, the various technologies that were told. Or if you want to go for a totally different um, class of materials which is coming these days, which is called perovskites. Have you heard of perovskites? Yeah. So that is the new challenger for the silicon based solar panels. Because they have got the one hundredth the weight, one hundred the maybe. 150 at the cost of the solar panel. Solar panels are very costly. Making that class of purity of silicon is a very bigger challenge, and we should make it. We should make it. So if somebody wants to do experimental work, Sandy is available here, plenty of technology is available here, you should be able to generate those silicon in silicon. So if you do that, it can be a startup, it can be a big factory, whatever it is, it's possible. Are the is the government doing? Government is also doing, but there is always a scope. Because I want to tell you, just uh, here in Quinea, there is uh, one company, I forgot the name of the company, is making carbon nanotubes. He is supplying to the United States in huge ton, and NASA itself has approved that facility to be one of the classic facility, and that straight away going, not many Indians are using, that's a different issue. So that means potential always exists. If you are capable of producing what Elon Musk got, probably it goes to Elon Musk. There is no issue. <laughs> so the only thing is it's a challenge. So how cheap you produce, what sort of quality you'll be able to achieve. The point 99 point. He said, you know, 99 point 999 12 times. <laughs> you, I, don't, I don't know whether you heard that. He told 99 point 999 12 times, 12 nines are there. So that's the sort of purity people are looking at. I don't know whether you can imagine, but that's nothing which happened. So therefore, so this is one thing of making those things, whether perovskite is nothing but, uh, you know, um, it's basically a, a uh, cadmium based, uh, a calcium based uh, compound. So if you are able to do that sort of perovskites, which is much, much cheaper, um, I don't know the cost, I think it's, I noted down the cost, but never mind. So, uh, these things are really, you know, if you are able to do that sort of, that class of material, which will really, you know, uh, challenge the already dominant silicon wafers, which is completely dominated by Chinese. Chinese are probably covering the whole surface, they will surface, they will cover the half of China in solar panels. <laughs> they want to generate, we are generating power in megawatts, and Musk talks about gigawatts, Chinese are talking about terawatts, thousand times bigger. So that's the sort of general. So ultimately they will also come back to perovskites because ultimately they will also, it's as on today, perovskites is the niche area which is cutting edge and it's possible to do. It's possible to do within India, within our laboratory. But whether all of us can enter the field of experimentation, difficult. And we Indians for whatever, uh, consequence of the providence. We were good at mathematics from quite a long time and we continue to hold on to the mathematics which is the mother of all sciences. So computational facilities have come and we are good at computers. So therefore modeling all these things, modeling a silicon wafer, the doping, the way the doping behaves is possible in computational, uh, in computational capabilities. So we should be able to model them model each and every one of this process and that becomes one good gray research area you should be able to latch on to that that that's a challenge so that's a good research for capability and for that all you need is some computers and software and good amount of literature and a hang of uh, you know basic physics 
So if you don't understand the physics, obviously you will not be able to make them. So this is one thing. Second thing is some experiment. The other thing is at least you can design the thing. You can conceptualize the design. It may not be possible to make them because of the technologies that are involved. See, for example, we told about wafers are probably the coatings. So coatings, if you see, if you want to coat the things in nano level, you have to are probably even at a higher thickness, micron level. You need to go for chemical vapor uh, infiltration, CVA process, or heavy that is electron beam, physical vapor deposition. So these are all the sort of things where you will be able to deposit the these things onto the surface such that this sort of batteries, this sort of hydrogen cells, etc., all those things can be done. So this technology is also very tough, but at micro level, lab level, it is possible. So all the research, whatever you can do in this EBPD, CVD, these technologies are needed for doing all those things. So I said this is done. That means they have got all the CVD reactors, EBPD reactors, they just do it and go ahead. So such several such a combination of such um, you know experiments they would have done to ultimately arrive at one final combination. You may use Taguchi method to uh, you know reduce the parameters and then probably arrive at the best possible combination, minimize the number of parametric analysis and then arrive at the solution. So this is the sort of things we can aim at. See mathematical modeling and these are all things. Then of course the, the other small things what we can do is the characterization of these materials. If you can get hang on all these materials, you should understand the capability of this material. All these new materials have to survive. If, they, if you make a solar panel with a new material, it has to survive in the sunlight, it has to survive the rain in this part of the country and hailstorm, everything it has to survive. You need to characterize all these things and prove, without which no department of energy will be able to accept the new material. So therefore, for research areas, you should be able to take those things, those smaller areas, simpler areas, and you should be able to do this characterization of materials for metallurgical for um, physical properties, chemical properties, and mechanical properties is is common no matter which class of material. Even if you want to do materials for uh, spaceships or probably the rockets or for gas turbines, engines, whichever. So this is common. And that is one of the com one of the most complicated uh, you know work. Because of the accuracies, because of the repeatability you need to achieve because of the statistically high quality data you need to generate. Put something, do some test, some gene value comes out, but that's of no use unless you are able to prove and generate a statistic, statistically high quality minus three sigma properties if they ask, if some designer wants to use it, which who wants to use or design the systems using low factors of safety. Say for example, all the, all the uh, civil substructures, so they use factors of safety of 6, 8, maximum 10 in some cases. But aerospace and this, uh, the modern cars and formula uh, cars, they use factor of safety of 1.2, 1.3. That means your data should be so perfect. If your data itself has a variation of 20%, your backup, so your design will not work. So therefore, you need to generate that sort of data. That sort of data is needed for the field cell. Suppose if you have got a cell, which is going into a micro body, which is ingested into the body. So if the vehicle is driven from outside to see the entire, um, how, where all it goes inside the body and comes out, you imagine the sort of battery it should work and the sort of reliability with which it should work. So that's the sort of nano technology you need to have and also the sort of reliability. So therefore, reliability generation of the data is also very difficult. So these are the prerequisites and Probably coming to the uh, the other things. For example, uh, we talked about the nanopolar generation. Nanopolar generation is not just going to the mill and put something and get the thing out. No? So ultimately, nanopowder generation itself is a task. So nanopowder uh, characterization is another task. So these are no. It doesn't matter what material you can start up with aluminum, alumina. So then you see how those things can be made. Quantum. All these things, some of them are difficult to do research because of the facility. Some of them it is possible to do because. So graphene is one thing probably you, you should be able to mix with it. For example, graphene, he said, they can 
really a, you know, modify the uh, structures of the uh, systems which are to be used in various energy storage and energy generation systems. So for example, he talked about uh, the hydrogen storage, which is a big challenge. There are several things which is a matter of discussion. Generation of hydrogen, everybody says, is a clean energy. Obviously, when you combine with oxygen, water comes from no problem at all. Uh, as far as carbon footprint is concerned, everybody is comfortable. But to generate hydrogen itself is a challenge. So probably there are, as he explained, several processes. So people have got one notion, gray hydrogen, green hydrogen, and blue hydrogen, depending on the way you generate them. So obviously, you should get the most efficient way of that. Then you have got the storage tanks which is essentially having, in simple terms, a sponge into which you put the uh, hydrogen in. Because if you want to store uh, in it in a tank, 700 atmosphere of pressure will be there. No, I mean, the structural designer to design such tank, it's a challenge. So if you can put a sponge in which it goes, the pressure comes down to around 100. So it is easy to handle, easy to carry. Because if you make a container which which, which, which has got the capability to survive 700 atmosphere, you, it will be heavier than your car. So you have to come out of the car and then go leave this. So therefore, you need to design the devices. No matter, you can go to composites. Composites is another field where uh, probably you can uh, locate for storing this. But ultimately, you need to uh, concentrate on the energy materials. So this being the energy material conference. So I have told you the basic requisites for understanding the concepts what have been taught and then you need to also look at the sort of devices and the facilities and also if you want to work on the modeling so what's the sort of modeling problems that are available whether it is solar energy if you want to model the silicon wafers or if you want to model the uh, pescovite uh, paints which are the structure things which can be painted on that which is got a future with all the challenges and if you want to do uh, the hydrogen storage new materials get generated for storing i want to simplify that thing by telling that as a sponge which absorbs the hydrogen and keeps it that material itself is a challenge so cheaper material and more efficient material it is possible so modeling those materials is one challenge so you should be able to take that so in short, I think, I mean, I should uh, congratulate uh, Professor Ajay Kumar for uh, taking up this state-of-the-art uh, subject. And um, it's good that uh, we could get uh, like Dr. Kale uh, and other people to come and talk to you. But uh, uh, you should agree that it was very high order. The prerequisites for the talk was very high. <laughs> Nevertheless, please get all the things. Please Google each one of them. You will see a, a huge, you know, ton of information on each one of those things. So you have got potential to generate several problems from each one of them, and probably pursue your exploration in the field of high energy materials and devices. Thank you very much. So first of all, I thank Dr. S. Ramchandra. He's a scientist. But I felt that he's my great academician. Even got a teachers in the university for the last 20 years, we can't motivate the people like that. So <laughs> 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 I think I'm going to request you, whenever your time is there, you can spend some time doing me some guest lectures for our students and faculty also. We have to learn some your dynamism, how we can motivate the people. Uh, even in the simple talk is given a, a beautiful the explanation giving the from the basic materials to your applications. Once again, on behalf of the seminar uh, committee and the university, so thanks, special thanks to the Dr. S. from Children. The last thing is program. Now, I request uh, that college would uh, please come on the stage.